Hey, reality programmers. I am so excited to be here chatting with Ilaria Patrucci. She is in Italy. We're in Chicago. Welcome, darling. I am so excited to have you on the show. Darling, tell me, you talk about the people pleaser. This is what I really want to get into. So tell me about the people pleaser and the work you do as an NLP practitioner. Yes. Hello. And first of all, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and of course to have this conversation. So people pleasing. Um, I come, I'm a recovering people pleaser myself, and this is one of the biggest <laughs> I see you <laughs> holding your hand. And like so many of us, you know, and this is why I kind of am into this line of work. And my line of work has evolved into this because I am so, I've done so much healing work, so much, um, um, I made so much progress in my life through the healing from my people pleasing, which I'm still working on because, you know, the healing work never had, ends. And, and I have literally really come to learn how that has affected my, the relationship with myself, the relationship with um, my friends, my family, romantic relationships, the way I show up in the world and the way I have showed up in the world in my life. You know, I'm 41 today. And if I think about myself in my 20s, in my 30s, I can see the people pleasing really showing up and manifesting in so many different ways and so many different areas in my life. So this is why I do I do this work to really empower women to live a life of freedom from past conditioning, from this fear of rejection, from the fear of doing something wrong and fear of disappointing people and ultimately fear of being abandoned because of your choices or your different opinion. And to me, that's true freedom, just to be able to show up authentically for yourself in your relationships in every area without being afraid of being you, really. I love it. So I, I'm curious to know, uh, do you have brothers and sisters, siblings? I've got a younger sister. She's four years younger. So than you're me. older? I'm older, yes. Are you the oldest? Yes. It's just two Okay. Older. So <laughs> I'm the oldest sister mm -hmm. and we have so much in common with this people pleasing thing being the oldest mm -hmm. and all of the responsibilities that are kind of put on us. Oh, aren't you the great little helper? Right. Mm -hmm. So tell me, darling, you help women. What is the process and what is the result of helping women through this process? Yes. So everyone goes through different. The process is similar, but at the same time, it's so different for everyone, because although the experiences might have been the same, the way in which we internalize them and uh, in the way in which they show up in our life might be different. And ultimately, I think as a coach, I always try to show up with my clients in a way that is like a blank canvas. I never know anything. I never really have an agenda as such, which allows the, the client to actually show up as their full self. And it allows me to just have that kind of curiosity into really understanding where somebody is coming from. Um, but I, I love that you mentioned about siblings because I have done, um, I'm a trauma informed and I've just finished a year of studying with Gabor Mate. I don't know if you've heard of him. I absolutely love his work. Um, and the year, the professional training was all about childhood trauma, child development and addictions. Um, and what he says is no two siblings have the same childhood. And when I first heard this, um, I was like, this is so interesting and fascinating. And of course, I, you know, I'm fascinated about human behavior and psychology. So it was, it was so interesting to actually learn that no two siblings have the same childhood. And that's why you can be sisters, brothers, you can be in a family of two, three, four, and, and more, and yet grow up with different patterns with different behaviors and there's eight of us so i'm the second <sighs> oldest of eight so um wow. my my mother was catholic italian so mm -hmm. there was a lot of us <laughs> 
Yeah, big family, big family. Yeah. A lot of responsibility put on the oldest. Mm -hmm. yes, to look after the youngest and to grow up sooner than your time, really. So this created this people pleasing behavior and patterns that was brought with me in all kinds of relationships. So, so tell me, darling, the, do you have like, if somebody's going through this and realizing, oh my God, I'd say yes to everything. I realize that when somebody like looks at me funny or just says, no, I, I internalize it. There must be something wrong with me. What do you tell them? Yeah. Well, this is when we go back to childhood. You know, when is the first time that you were afraid to share yourself? And one of the biggest blocks, if you, we want to call it that way, one of the biggest obstacles that people please their face is that they don't know themselves. And the reason why we don't know ourselves is that so earlier on, we had to learn to be so switched on to other people's needs, other people's wants, other people's moods and emotions that we had to give ourselves up. Whether we had to put ourselves aside or perhaps not even begin the process of getting to know ourselves. Because from a survival perspective, we've learned that to be okay, I have to be as I'm told. I have to do what mommy or what daddy or whatever, whoever the caregiver is for, for you, um, what they expect of me. So in order for me to conform to those, to those expectations, I literally do not have the time. So the, the actual choice that we make, which is an unconscious choice, and I, I, I love to highlight as well that in childhood is not even so much a choice. The choice is between Am I going to be authentic to myself and true to myself? Or am I going to choose to connect and attach to my caregiver? And of course, as a one, two, three, four, even eight-year-old, we're not going to choose, I'm going to be authentic because we need to survive. That's our prime, you know, primal need. Um, so we can it's like kind of it's a choice that we don't have. So we have to choose attachment over our own authenticity. So the work that you do afterwards when you find yourself in adulthood on your own, having to face all of these things and you're like, where do I start from? Well, you start from you. You start from getting to know you. Um, and then that's the healing begins there really. I love it. You know, first of all, having no agenda mm. and allowing whoever is in mm -hmm. front to just yeah. show up. And then once you show up, you have to get to know this person that just showed up because most of the time it's hidden and put away because of those fears. And, you know, thinking back, it's like, okay, I was seven and it was my fourth sibling no fifth sibling mm -hmm. and um I was feeding her <laughs> throughout the day while mom was doing other things so you know I was like okay I was helping it felt good to conform to a seven-year-old and be praised yeah. for those things and then you're imprinted with that pattern so you use that pattern to frail your way through and hide your authenticity definitely must know self so tell me darling how do you help women know themselves yeah one thing that I want to say that came up as you were talking uh, when you said when I work with clients to create the space for them to be themselves I don't know if you heard of the saying that the healing is in the coaching or therapeutic relationship because that is possibly for most for a lot of people the first time where they begin to learn what being yourself looks and feel and sound like and how do I feel in my body and be myself and do I feel safe being myself because safety is a huge topic that comes up um, you know, in, in sessions with my clients and the women I work with. 
Um, so how answering your question, how do I help them know themselves is, again, the process is different for everyone, but to just literally get in touch with what brings you joy. It's just literally, it can be as simple as that. What brings you joy and what things makes you happy uh, without thinking about what consequences that might be for other people. You know, if there were no consequences, who would you be? And then we start that conversation and then fears come up, resistance come up. And that's kind of like the healing kind of works. And then you look at the resistance because one of the biggest thing, in fact, the biggest thing is I work a lot with both mind and body so my nlp training allows me to navigate the mind and change mindsets with people and my training with gabor and trauma training allows me to work with emotions in the body because you can't talk yourself out of trauma out of conditioning out of people pleasing because people pleasing is a trauma response right so um, yes, we can't do the healing where the issue is. <laughs> you got to yeah. do the healing much deeper than that. Yes. Yeah. I love that you talked about resistance. Mm -hmm. What does resistance feel like? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, again, it can feel different for different people. For some people, it's perceived as a thought. For some people, it's perceived as, I don't want to go there. Some people procrastinate, you know, resistance shows up through, I'm just going to distract myself so I don't have to face this. Resistance can be overeating, uh, over drinking, overworking. Um, resistance can be anxiety in the body. Um, so it can show up in different ways. And, and it's very good to actually start to become aware of how do you feel when resistance come up. Oh. Now you mentioned something really, really important. Mm. Start to become aware. Mm. And so in the work I've done over the years as a cranial sacral therapist, mm. working with women who have experienced trauma or sexual assault, domestic violence, those things. When you're working with this in the body, and I totally just lost my train of thought, but you were just talking about that resistance in the body and then how it shows up in the body yes. and working with the body and asking what brings joy. So mm -hmm. go from there. Yeah. So yeah, I totally I just mean, lost my train of thought. There were so many wonderful things and it's like, oh my God, I want to talk that, that, that. And it's like, it'll come back. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, resistance is like trauma is in the body. That's why I was saying before, you can't talk yourself out of a traumatic experience of a copy mechanism or um, resistance, it's in the body. So when I, like the healing work is to be with yourself because a big part of us not knowing ourselves is also that we neglect our feelings, we neglect our emotions. You know, I, I, ca I can be angry around my dad or I can be needy or I can ask for what I want because ex-caregiver gets upset. So in order for me to keep the peace and to stay connected, again, that choice of attachment, I'm not going to be angry anymore. So I'm going to suppress. You know, and then we wonder why there's so many people that are depressed. We, we grow up learning how to depress ourselves and, you know, uh, neglect our feelings and ignore. So the work in the body is the biggest part of the healing where you literally learn to be with yourself, with all the emotions and bring compassion and get to know your inner child. What, what did she or what did he need that they didn't get? Um, and that's, that's where the healing is. So I would say yes. mindset work is important, but for healing, permanent healing, and really transforming the way you live and the way you show up for yourself and the relationship that you create and build, somatic work and working in the body is the only way. 
I love that you mentioned somatic work because everything just came back to me. It's like, okay, cranial sacral therapy yeah. that includes somatic work. And when I worked with women, I would ask the body questions. It would answer me. Yes. No. You know, the whole cranial sacral system, whether it contracts or expands. So I realized in talking with women afterwards, they would say things like, oh my gosh, I actually feel where my body is. And, and I haven't felt parts of my body there. They were like completely cut, up, cut, cut off from yeah. the neck down. So they're mm -hmm. in here, the head and cut off. So after making that connection and, and realizing awareness, you said awareness, yeah. which is important. Yeah. And then making that connection of being disconnected from myself. Therefore I'm disconnected from everything. So how do you reconnect? Yeah. That's, that's the healing feeling yourself because, you know, when we talk about trauma, it's important to, um, define what trauma is so trauma is not the event that happened to you trauma is what happened inside of you as a result of what happened to you which is something that I've learned for Dr. Gabor as well and and beyond that I always like to add not just what happened inside of you but what you did with that where you left on your own to deal with the overwhelm as a child obviously of a world that you couldn't understand because your brain wasn't actually developed to understand. It wasn't for you to do it on your own. But who did you speak to about your overwhelming experience? And most people say, nobody. Now that's the trauma because you were left on your own. Nobody explained to you what happened. Nobody held you with your emotions. Nobody told you that it's okay to feel angry, upset, um, or sad, you know, and so or how to how to or the tools on how to process those. Yeah, yeah. You know, this Absolutely. is this is where writing comes in, and journaling, uh, journaling, and art can yeah. come and express it through yes. that. So and rather than repeating it, it mm -hmm. yeah, even just the acceptance of you know what well, I am feeling angry and that's okay. So validating your feelings, it's absolutely important and then you can address the behavior which is something that you know I've learned as well in child development always validate the emotion the emotion is never wrong the behavior now can be wrong you know you can say I understand you feel angry but it's not okay to behave that way rather than stop being angry or stop crying or girls don't get angry and boys don't cry you know the famous <laughs> famous lines yeah yeah, exactly. That's that conforming <laughs> behavior yeah. patterns that are put on us. Yes. Yes. You know, um, I want to ask, how can people get a hold of you? Yes. So I've got uh, Instagram is probably the place where I share the most content. Uh, so my Instagram is Ilaria Petrucci underscore coaching. Um, and I've got a website as well, which is Ilaria Petrucci coaching dot com. Awesome. And it looks like you have a free call. Yes, I do. Yeah, so we can definitely, we can put that in the show notes for sure. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to leave our listeners with heartfelt? <sighs> yes. Um, prioritize you. It's not selfish to put yourself first because you cannot give what you don't have so fill yourself up and be full of yourself and then go out in the world and share your message and if you're struggling in any way allow yourself to reach out for support because one of the things that I see a lot as well with my clients is which is part of part of the pattern is to tell yourself that you, um, you don't need support or that you're going to bother somebody if you reach out to ask for help. And that's just not true. So um, have the self-love and the self-compassion to reach out for support and to just start this journey because there is so much freedom and so much peace and happiness that can come from healing. 
I love that message. Thank you so much. And you mentioned patterns, you know, mm. well, as reality programmers and programming our own reality patterns really are programs yes. and they are reprogrammable. Absolutely. And that's what NLP is all about, neuro-linguistic programming, mm -hmm. because it has to start in the nervous system because the, you can't talk yourself out of it through the mind work. No. It has no. to be in the nervous system. I love it. I want to thank you so much for being on with us. And um, listeners, please, I want to hear your comments. What did you love and what would you love more of? And in the meantime, keep being amazing. Thank you.